I'm talking uh, about new developments in COVID-19 uh, disease and uh, myeloma, monoclonal gammopathies. Uh, we are all aware that uh, patients with uh, monoclonal gammopathies, but more so patients with full-blown myeloma, have an increased risk for infections, have an impaired immune uh, system, which is mainly due to the immune suppressive activity of the malignant clonal clones, and may be uh, even aggravated by therapy, by chemotherapy, and now more so by certain forms of immunotherapy. So this explains why, number one, myeloma patients have an increased risk for COVID infection. Secondly, they have an increased risk uh, for uh, more severe symptoms and particularly for prolonged disease. And uh, thirdly, they have an increased risk for mortality due to COVID. And when you analyze uh, the data from different uh, centers and countries, uh, you find out that the mortality of hospitalized patients, patients hospitalized due to COVID is around 35%. So, of course, we need uh, to do our utmost to prevent uh, the development of infections and, of course, all the clinical consequences. Now, we have, as you know, uh, several vaccines. In the um, uh, Western countries, we have, of course, uh, RNA vaccines, but there are also DNA vaccines available. There are adenovector vaccines available. And in other parts of the world, there are protein uh, based vaccines or peptide based vaccines available. And uh, uh, so uh, a whole uh, range of vaccines, but the vaccines which uh, probably are used in the developed countries are those from Moderna, from BioNTech, from AstraZeneca, and from Janssen. Uh, but there are new uh, providers coming like um, Huavac or Novavac or Inovio and so on. So uh, having said that, uh, we know that uh, uh, vaccines are very uh, active in myeloma, more active than, for instance, influenza vaccines, but you have to vaccinate with most vaccines your patient at least twice. Uh, this is different uh, for the Astros, uh, for the uh, Janssen uh, uh, vaccine, where you just need the one uh, shot. But uh, for AstraZeneca, uh, Moderna, and uh, uh, Pfizer, you need two shots. The problem with this uh, policy is that it works well for a significant proportion of our patients, and mainly in those patients with a very stable disease who are in remission. Um, uh, it works well in patients with MGAS, but the immune response is uh, weaker in, already weaker in patients with smoldering myeloma and maybe is, uh, severely impaired in patients with multiple myeloma. When we talk about immune response, we have to um, um, define uh, what we are meaning. So we are talking about humoral immune response and that is usually uh, uh, measured by, by checking the IgG uh, antibody levels against spike proteins or IgM levels, IgG and IgM, but uh, it's probably um, more advanced to use uh, what we uh, say neutralizing antibodies because neutralizing antibody titers have been shown to correlate with protection in uh, monkeys, in macaques, and there is some uh, uh, data, so there are some clinical data that neutralizing antibodies give you a clue about the uh, protection uh, of individual patients. But uh, we should also consider that there is a cellular immune response. So we should in the, in, uh, analyze this and explore this in greater detail. And cellular immune response seems to be very important, particularly for reinfections. And what we don't measure at this point of time is the um, uh, immune response in the mucosal tissue. So the secretary IgA against uh, COVID antigens is not measured at this point of time. So of course, measuring antibody titers is something 
which we are, which is available, which can be widely used, but we need to um, consider that it has, of course, certain limitations. So, um, who is not responding, or who is likely not to show a very good response, antibody response to COVID vaccines? Uh, these are, first of all, very elderly patients, and that is not specific to myeloma. These are patients with uncontrolled disease. These are patients with more uh, lines of therapy, previous lines of therapy. And these may be patients uh, who are on uh, longer standing therapy with anti CD38 antibodies, or with fights against PCMA, or with uh, CAR T cell therapy. So many of those patients show uh, no or very weak immune response, humoral immune response uh, to spike proteins. Now, what can we do if a patient does not respond accordingly? And here we are not on very safe grounds, but uh, of course, uh, one considers to use a third shot and uh, or a second shot if you use uh, Janssen, uh, Janssen vaccine. And it should be uh, probably a heterologous vaccination. So you shouldn't uh, use the same, or let's put it other way. It's probably um, more effective if you use another vaccine uh, than that which you have used for the first and second dose. So we call it heterologous vaccination. These three, uh, yields uh, usually a boost uh, to the uh, immune system and uh, yields better antibody responses. If this is not working, and if a patient um, does not uh, yield any significant immune response, then the question is, what can we do? Uh, first of all, we have to rely on what we call herd immunity. So the more people are vac vac being vaccinated, the better. We have to uh, um, foresee that the patient is covered or is uh, um, treated in a setting uh, which we call ring uh, immunity, so that all his caregivers or family members, contact people are vaccinated. So that's important. And of course, these patients are still required to um, do strict uh, measures uh, for protection, uh, mask wearing, social distancing. And then you can ask, uh, what shall we do in patients uh, who have these uh, um, deficient uh, immune response to COVID when they need high dose therapy or when particularly when they have uh, had a contact with a COVID positive individual. And here uh, you can consider to use monoclonal antibodies. The monoclonal antibodies, which uh, have been shown to be effective, particularly in nursery homes and so on. So you can think about that, but we have to consider that this is not uh, approved for those for this indication at this point of time. So in the end, uh, of course, we hope that uh, many more people will be vaccinated and that uh, uh, additional vaccinations in patients with myeloma uh, result in higher or better immune response. And uh, then um, uh, that, that they are more or less protected, but we have to acknowledge that when you use uh, intensive therapy, that the antibody response wanes, for instance, after high-dose therapy or after certain immunotherapies. So that would need uh, the, uh, the re-evaluation of the immune status after uh, or during these procedures in order to know whether the patient is protected. There is one uh, specific problem which is still unresolved because um, official centers like the Center of Disease Control or the FDA do not recommend routine antibody testing in our patients. But when I ask them, what else do you uh, then uh, recommend, uh, you don't get a good answer at this point of time, so we have no other choice. And actually, two days ago, uh, the FDA and uh, approved the third shirt, shirt, shirt shot in patients with immunosuppressive states. And uh, I think you shouldn't, uh, it's, there's no need to uh, vaccinate again 
um, a patient with a very good antibody response, even if he has myeloma or she. Um, but there is a great need to uh, identify and to vaccinate those who have a suboptimal immune response and to follow the antibody titers uh, during uh, phases of active um, therapy, particularly active immunotherapies, and to intervene if uh, the antibody uh, uh, titers uh, go down again, and to use more precautions and to inform the patient that they need to be more careful in this situation. In the future, we'll have more vaccines. We will have vaccines which can be used, uh, administered via the nasal mucosa. These vaccines are supposed to produce, to induce a local immune response, so secretory IgA. We will have vaccines uh, which target two different epitopes on the virus, for instance, uh, the spike protein or uh, the receptor binding domain, domain some uh, epitopes there, so they will be more active in the future. And of course, we have these uh, virus variants, and now uh, the uh, variants uh, in, of particular concern is the Delta virus, uh, virus variant, uh, which is uh, uh, highly transmissible. It is probably uh, 100 times more transmissible than the original Wuhan strain. Uh, but uh, still, our, uh, our vaccines uh, are able to cover and uh, to limit uh, the, uh, 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 the spread of the virus. But uh, the uh, activity of the titers, antibody titers, which are induced by these conventional vaccines, is somewhat lower than against uh, the original Wuhan or other uh, variants. Uh, so, um, so this, of course, um, highlights the, the um, difficult situation that uh, we sh uh, need to vaccinate as many people uh, as possible on the globe in order to uh, restrict uh, time the virus has to develop, to mutate, and to develop uh, even more transmissible, more infectious variants in the future. So hopefully all your patients are vaccinated, and hopefully most of them have a good uh, antibody response or will receive a will mount an antibody response after a search shot. With that, I would like to close and thank you very much for listening to me so long. Thank you.